Hi there, Abrams Dick to fans. Where you two, your uh, your two favorite lawyers are here at the beautiful Chautauqua Institution in Chautauqua, New York. So, uh, Barbara, we've been up here for about five days now. How's it been? It's been absolutely wonderful. Yeah, what what have we been doing this week? It's been a busy week, hasn't it? Wow, um, what haven't we done? Uh, ballet performances, sailing, symphony performances. Uh, we just went through two art museums. We've had some amazing lectures on journalism and ethics, and we've just done so much. So the week has really been a theme week, um, this journalism and ethics. Actually, it's media and ethics, right? Is that the, the title? What's the title? I don't know. Yeah. Something so, like that. Yes. So, but, but you're right. We've, we've really had some great lectures, and uh, we heard a Supreme Court lecture yesterday that was yes. interesting. And, um, so what, what's been your favorite thing? That's always the question we ask each other. What did you like the most, <laughs> right? And it's always the most difficult one to end, to, to answer. Well, this week it is not. Yeah. Tell me, what, uh, what did My you like? My favorite thing this week was a lecture by an Azerbaijani journalist who talked about journalism in authoritarian regimes and all that she's been through. Her friends have been jailed. Her brother was jailed because of what she did. Eventually, her entire family had to flee because of the government persecution because she was being a journalist. And she really talked about all the struggles that go on in authoritarian countries for journalists and all of the efforts the government has made to, you know, shut down media outlets and to basically shut up journalists. And one of the things that she noted was that studies are showing that worldwide the amount of press freedom is decreasing. It's not increasing, it's decreasing. So it's not just Azerbaijan and Venezuela, it's many places around the world are having fewer and fewer media freedoms. And one questioner asked her what advice she would have for the American media now that they've been declared an enemy of the state. And she smiled ruefully and said, join the club. You know, one thing, um that I find is interesting. Chautauqua planned these these weeks out years in advance. So they didn't just six months ago decide we're going to do a, a week on the media. Oh no, this was planned long before the right, election. Right, right. And yet the one of the overwhelming things that has, every speaker we've heard this week has come back to is the sea change that's happened in American politics. Yes. Uh, very focused on Donald Trump more than anything else. Um, and it, it, I'm getting the sense that there is a real sense of, of concern and crisis um, with uh, how people feel about the Trump presidency. Oh, I, absolutely there is, but we're looking more at the ethics of how journalism is covering it. So for example, right now, every morning you wake up and you see what's the latest thing that Donald Trump did. The media is focused on Donald Trump because he's the shiny object. He's what's getting you know, ra ratings and viewers and readers. But should the media be doing that? Or should the media be focusing on what's important, things like infrastructure and healthcare? Well, I, I think those are really good questions. But you know, I noticed it because I paid a lot of attention and really, um, you know, I, I love law. And you know, I'm a law geek. And so the Supreme Court lecture, where you're talking about the history of the Supreme Court, and, and I noticed, well, the speaker didn't talk a lot about Trump. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and he gave about as apolitical a speech as anybody could have given. I mean, it was really a lot of trivia about the yes. court and his yes. time as a clerk on the court yes. and as an appellate court judge. But what, um, what was interesting is if you listen to the, 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 um, the audience when they asked their questions, mm -hmm. it was very focused on the impact of Trump and the... Um, the current state of political affairs in, in the country. But some of it is, is not even so much about Trump as the issues that current events are raising. Like, for example, Charlottesville is on everybody's mind yes. right now. And one of the concerns was, should the media be covering what these hate groups are doing? Is that giving them a platform? And some people say, don't give them oxygen, ignore them. And other people say, no, the best disinfectant is sunlight. Right. And the the cure to hate speech is more speech. So that's a big dilemma is 
do you cover these hate groups and their actions? And if so, how much? Well, one thing that might be good to also talk, tell our listeners about is um, when we talk about the people at Chautauqua, you know, who are the people that come here? And, you know, do they, you know, is this a homogeneous political, you know, environment where it's overwhelmingly liberal or is this a, 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 a mixed environment? Um, you know, my observations um, certainly is that this week, this particular week, tends to be mainly Caucasian and 50 and over. While there are some kids here, it's not what it is earlier in the season. Normally we come in an earlier week. Um, but I think there is a good span of political views here. Um, I don't think you see a lot of extremists, either liberal or conservative here. And it does tend to be an educated population that comes here. Well, not only educated, but intellectually curious, and those two are not the same. Right. But these are people open-minded, who are open-minded, who are willing to engage in civil discourse about the issues of the day. I don't think it's overwhelmingly conservative or overwhelmingly liberal. I, I think there's a, a good balance there. Is, are there a lot of elderly guests, the retirees, who have the time to come here? Right. And, but, and quite honestly, often the money to come here. Jim, I do want to uh, mention one thing that we've seen for the first time here that you know, we've been coming here about seven, eight years now. And for the first time I've heard the moderators, when it comes to asking questions, ask people to kind of censor themselves, to not incite anger to, to uh, one, one, one moderator said, please don't ask questions that might marginalize people. And I think you in one of your lectures, they, um, I think you told me they, uh, they wouldn't answer a question, they passed on it because the audience didn't like it. Right, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was very upset about that and it you know and that concerns me because this is I've never seen that here before and it seems like people are are afraid of the anger that you know that can seems to be simmering simmering below the surface sometimes in American society do you think that's right well I think that is right I mean keep in mind we're only a few days after Charlottesville and what went on there and I think people are, are scared and tension is high and People are on edge. Right. I do think so, and I, and I'm sorry to see it be that way because Chautauqua has always been, you know, the most open-minded place I've ever been. Right, right. And you know, I think a good motto for this place is our heads are round, so our thinking can change direction. Right. Yes. But yes, I I have not been happy to hear moderators, t actually two or three times now, give yes. that admonition. Right. Which is I've never heard here before. Right. And so. You know, it's very interesting here at Chautauqua, we're kind of in this nirvana you know, of, of what America at least could be in, in my mind, and yet we're not cut off from it either. Why don't you give them a tour of the plaza and the fountain? Right. So we're, we're in a place, what is, what is this place called? Bester Plaza. Bester Plaza. And this is the center of Chautauqua. This is yes. kind of the heartbeat. And uh, we are uh, sitting on a bench in front of Bester Fountain here, which is right behind us here. And the building at the end of the, uh, the plaza here, that's actually the library. Um, this place has been going on since the 1870s. And um, I'll show everyone a place that's very, uh, that red canopy over there. Um, I was walking by one day and looked in and there was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, United States Supreme Court Justice sitting in a chair there. Um, well, tell them what that is. That's, that's the author's nook next to the bookstore where authors sign their books. Yeah. The, the whole bottom of this building here that's actually the post office, the downstairs is all the Chautauqua bookstore, which is one of the best bookstores I've ever been in. I've never gotten a bad book out of the place. Um, and then uh, those are the administrative offices and, and stores there. But uh, the grounds here are beautiful and it's, um, it's a great place. And I hope that uh, some of our friends from uh, Cyberland will one day come share this experience with us. Cause, uh, we haven't we haven't been real successful in getting our friends to come up here, but uh, <laughs> the times that we do, it's a lot of fun to share this with our friends, don't you think? Well, and I, I think one thing that's interesting to note is all the bicycles that you're seeing on the plaza. None of them are locked. Nobody locks their no. bike up here. Uh, our doors aren't locked. The rooming house where we stay, none of the doors have locks. Right. Um, it, it's just an absolutely amazing place. 
to be. It's it's a it, it's, it's like Nirvana. A, it is. It's it, it it's a week away from the world while still engaging with the problems of the world. If that makes any sense. Right. I think I think you've, you've and, done it. Well. And I like the way you say it, where it's got one foot in the past and one foot in the future. Right. While examining the present. Yes. Yeah, so, so anyhow, guys, I think that's all. That's long enough for today, and that's I think that's all we really have. But uh, we're going to go see a symphony tonight. Well, first we have a pre-symphony lecture by oh. a music professor that will teach us about the music and the composer, and then we will be going to hear the Chautauqua Symphony. Barbara's going to go to the, the pre-symphony <laughs> lecture because it always ruins it for me. Because, you know, the guy says, oh, you know, listen to the timpanis here. That's a tree falling in the woods. And then I spend the whole symphony list, trying to listen for the timpanis, which I never can hear anyways. So, uh, so well, I find it's pretty it, sad if you can't hear the timpanis. Well, you know, <laughs> but I, it doesn't sound like a tree falling to me. So, so I just go and listen to the pretty music and yell Freebird from the audience. <laughs> yeah. And then Barb won't sit next to me anymore. But, but the, 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 the real joy tonight is before that, because it's one of my favorite things here. And that is the turkey dinner at the Methodist Church. It's it's um, it's it reminds me of Shomri Torres dinners, <laughs> except we don't serve turkey and gravy and stuff like that ever. But uh, but it's a wonderful dinner, and um, they do it every Thursday night, and and I, I love it. It reminds me of things from my childhood, and um, and the people are so nice. And so that's the Thursday night tradition. And yes. then what's the Saturday lunch tradition? Oh, the, the fireman's uh, chicken barbecue, which is the most amazing chicken barbecue ever. Yeah, the Chautauqua Volunteer Fire Department has yes. a fundraiser where they serve barbecued chicken. Yes, yes. And, uh, yeah, and it's, it's great. So, uh, like I say, this place is kind of a blend of the traditional and the, the innovative. So, uh, you know, you can't see it, but this is all under a Wi-Fi canopy. <laughs> but what I notice is, though... <laughs> Most people, unlike us who are sitting here with our technology, they put their technology down while they're here, at least most of the time. Well, why don't you show them the people talking on the benches yeah. or the kids playing in the trees? Yes. Yeah. So, the, so it, it really is a magical place, and I hope that uh, we can share this with some of you one day. And, uh, and actually what's unusual right now is usually there's music. Yes. Us usually there'll be a, a violin you know, trio on one side of the plaza and a brass quartet on the other side. And, and banjos. Sometimes you see banjos. <laughs> Very rarely banjos. <laughs> I've seen banjos. <laughs> but it, it's definitely a beautiful, magical place. Yeah. Well, take care, folks, and we'll see you next time on Abrams Dicta. Bye-bye. <laughs>